Hey, what's up folks? Today we're gonna to be talking about pitch bend and mod wheel technique. For many, it's all about the thumb, for both. But for me and many others, it's about the thumb and the index finger. Pitch bend and mod wheels come in a lot of different flavors. You have the original mini Moog version, which is kind of the industry standard. Then you have the Oberheim style pitch bend box with the levers. Then you have the Roland style pitch bend and mod wheel. And most recently in the past few decades, we have the Nord stage version with the uh, wooden pitch bend wheel and uh, the gray mod wheel. They all do the same thing, but the physical sensation of it is a bit different. First, let's throw it back to the Minimo because that was the first synth that was widely available that had a pitch bend and mod wheel. This is the classic synth, the lead synth that kind of started it all. The place where the pitch and mod wheels are uh, kind of established this new technique of being able to play a keyboard instrument. It's a little bit different than most of the kind of uh, pitch bend and mod wheels that we're used to in contemporary synths, albeit this is a reissue, but it's true to the original late 60s, early 70s. Uh, the difference is that the pitch bend is not spring-loaded, so meaning it's going to stay where you put it. Um, and that has some interesting ramifications when you're playing, especially if you're not used to it. Another quirk about the pitch bend, you cannot change the amount of semitones with the pitch bend wheel, so you can't make this a classic two semitone pitch up and down. It's actually just a set interval so you kind of have to feel your way around the pitch bend wheel, kind of like a violinist or a cellist or you know a, a string instrument without a fretboard would get around their instrument. Um, but it also offers some more expressivity that maybe you would not find when you're always playing an instrument that has a fretted pitch bend, meaning you know you can choose exactly how many semitones you want to go. So let me just show you what I mean. <laughs> So you get those really crazy kind of almost vocal pitch bends that are really expressive. I like being able to do subtle pitch bend maneuvers. And when it's not spring loaded, sometimes your index finger, it feels like it has more control over that like. Let's talk about why if you use your index finger and your thumb, you may have more control over the sound. By having the index finger on the pitch bend and the thumb on the mod wheel, we can quickly go into a vibrato effect from doing a pitch bend. Rather than trying to kind of sloppily get back and forth. And with the reissue, now also we have the LFO rate to play with. Let's slide over and check out a more modern synth, one of the sequential Dave Smith Instruments uh, style pitch bend and mod wheel uh, setups. So moving on over here to the Prophet Rev 2, which is a modern synth, um, actually probably my favorite modern poly synth. Sound design is limitless on this thing and everything just sounds great. But continuing this discussion from the Mini Moog, uh, the difference here, first of all, with the pitch bend is it's spring loaded, meaning when I play a note, it will come back, which you'll probably be more used to on most of the synths that are out there because this is the most common uh, type of pitch bend uh, mechanism. So that introduces some other very interesting things. First of all, manual vibrato. Because it's spring loaded, you can use your index finger to just push up on the mod wheel and let go and that will create the vibrato effect, almost like a trill on the piano. You'll see folks doing it with their thumb. I find that that is a little less controlled than if you do it with your index finger. 
And just like I said about playing on the Mini Moog, your thumb then has the control of the mod wheel. And that gets interesting for other types of patches. We'll get into that in a moment. But I think it's very important to understand the difference in emotion when you do an LFO style vibrato and a manual pitch bend vibrato. With the pitch bend, it sounds almost like you're playing a guitar, like a guitar player would vibrato because they're pulling the, the string back and forth. Uh, you can achieve an effect that may be a little more personal to you. Um, but that's not to say that the LFO version with the mod wheel is not great too. It's just great to have more options, more options, more expressivity. It's very expressive to come into a pitch from above and also obviously from below and if you want to sound like a guitar player if you pitch bend up to the next whole step and then play that very whole step just like a guitar player would bend their string anyhow there you go that's some lead style pitch bend mod wheel technique for you Let's shift gears now into talking about a style of patch that I like to play on my Rev2 pack. It's called Rev2 Glide Sauce. I started really first hearing this sound from Christian Almiron and Nick Semrad. But it's a very simple patch. It's just a sawtooth wave and the cutoff is uh, being modulated by the mod wheel. So, so instead of having to take my fingers over here and adjust it over here, it's happening over here. Interestingly enough, you cannot do this easily like on a classic analog synth. This is more of a modern technique, but um, this allows for some crazy expressivity. And there I have Aftertouch controlling the vibrato because the mod wheel is now controlling the filter. So uh, going back to the whole point of this video, the thumb and the index finger technique, the way we achieve the sound and all the subtleties is by manipulating the pitch bend wheel and the mod wheel at the same time. So there I dipped into the pitch, but I also at the same time was bringing in the mod wheel. allows you to have a lot more control over the sound than if you were to be like, well, I can't even do it with just my thumb. And this really requires this technique. And one last thing about this patch, uh, if you have a analog style synth with a limited amount of voices, in this case eight, you can create that glidey sound by making sure you're always playing eight notes at a time. This also brings me to the discussion of how you set your pitch bend wheel. You know, traditionally, it's a it's a whole step up or down. But I actually like to have it set to seven semitones or a perfect fifth because it allows me to reach for extensions in minor seventh chords and major seventh chords. So when I play a chord like C major seven. If I pitch bend up a fifth, I get G major seven, which is just the extensions of the chord. So that sounds cool to be able to go back and forth between them. And we get a fifth lower from here. So uh, that would be F major seven. So F major seven sharp 11. And this last technique is pretty much the same as we've been discussing, but uh, this, in this scenario, the mod wheel controls the volume. So you can use the mod wheel kind of like a guitar player would use an expression pedal. 
You might ask, why aren't you just using an expression pedal? But the same kind of technique that we've been using for the filter applies here. So you can achieve these really beautiful emotional effects by programming your keyboard to do these things. And then most importantly, practicing this technique with your thumb and your index finger. It turns playing the synth into not playing the piano. You're playing synth. And it's important to be able to get as much out of this instrument as you can, just as you would practice all the things on the piano for technique and all the things that bring out emotion on that instrument. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this useful and I encourage you to try this technique if it's not something you're used to. And if you are used to it, continue practicing it and continue finding new ways to be expressive with the synthesizer. And I hope you find that some of these techniques elevate your music playing to new heights. See you next time.